things. So uh, uh, one of my far, one of my turkey producers, when I showed up at his uh, turkey farm and we went, he, he didn't take me to go show the birds because uh, I was probably carrying things from other farms. But what he did take me to was his control center. And we went into a sanitized room where he sat down with his supercomputer and he's downloading prices and he's he's putting all of this mixture for his feed based on what the current price is out there and what the demand is going to be and deciding uh, how big he needs to grow his turkeys. And so when I see examples like that or an education, uh, you go into rural Minnesota or frankly all around Minnesota, we're putting one-to-one -one devices in kids' hands. And to send that device home with that student who can't get the same work done at home that somebody who may be closer to a broadband connection, that's a huge disadvantage. Uh, and I think the third thing is uh, telemedicine. As our, uh, as our uh, population gets older, their access to that telemedicine and their access to getting to a rural hospital that can give you the same services of sending that radiology uh, out and getting that back in through a broadband is absolutely critical. So, I mean, all of that just tells me exactly what we got to do here. And one thing that I want to just add is, um, Colleen may not be able to say this, but I can't call your senators, call your representatives. You better get on the phone with us because that's what we respond to. And more importantly, go to your county commissioners and go to your city council members and tell them they need to start adding this to their budgets because there's not going to be a windfall of money, but they can do a match. And too often I hear a county that will say to me, hey, we won't, when are we going to get the broadband money? I said, well, tell me your match on this. Oh, well, our county commissioners aren't going to approve anything. Well, guess what? You're going to keep getting pushed back. You've got to get to your county commissioners. You've got to let them know how important this is to you and your businesses so they can get involved. Uh, USDA offers the loans. Economic development authorities can tap into those. There's lots of ways to do this, but you've got to get involved at a grassroots level because, frankly, what's going to happen is we're not going to be able to approve all the money that's going to take this away, so it's going to be a competitive process. Great question, of course, and uh, I think it just harkens back to that border-to-border uh, -border broadband listening tour that we undertook uh, a couple of uh, years ago. I should tell the story. We were uh, This is probably the coldest day of the year in 2014. The governor had just uh, canceled school around the state, and we had our first visit up in Park Rapids, Minnesota at, I think, 10 a.m., and I had, asked, I had visited my grandparents the night before. I didn't know if my car was going to start to get there. Thank God it did. I got there, and I didn't know how many folks were going to show up to talk about Broadway. School had been canceled. It was really, really cold. We had over 50 people in Park Rapids together to talk about Broadway and the importance of it in our rural economies and quality of life. And, and that just highlights the importance of the issue. And we repeated that experience time and time again on our listening tour. Fortunately, it warmed up, and school did resume across the state. But one thing that I took, in addition to those lessons about, you know, quit talking, we've got to act and empower local uh, um, actors and stakeholders because many of these challenges are locally based and that we have a, a diverse state and, and, and great actors. A third thing that stuck with me, and this came up a lot in, during that listening tour, is that it used to be if a family was thinking about moving to a community, the first thing they would ask about, how good are your schools? You know, can we expect that our kids are going to be able to compete with the best and the brightest around the, the state, around the, the country, around the world? If we were to move our family to this community, how good are the public schools? Well, nowadays, the first question that people ask if they're looking to move to a community is, what's the connectivity like? You know, can we thrive in this community? Can we compete? Can we access all of the content online? Can we live a 21st century life? And I think that question right there is so important in rural Minnesota. When you look at the challenges we face with brain drain, with a lot of our, our, our youngest uh, you know, graduates and, and, and uh, young adults you know, moving to bigger cities, it's so important that we level that playing field. And I think it just speaks to the notion of you know, connectivity being the great equalizer in greater Minnesota. And so if I were to point to one, one story, that was it. Broadband connectivity is the most of, of, of many anecdotes. One, my, uh, my colleague in the crowd, Al Junkie, likes to tell of his former roommate, uh, an, an Iron Range legislator, is in order to upload pictures, he would start the process and then go outside and cut a cord of wood, and hopefully the pictures would be uploaded by then. Um, you know, I was also in Pine City just last week, and I was, I was talking to uh, the new president of Pine Tech, and he was telling me from one of his online courses, and he's in, in, in he lives in Morda, Canada County, which is it's just way behind. And in order to upload his his coursework, which is indicative for students of all ages, he would drive to the library parking lot in the winter, try to get close enough to their Wi-Fi signal, and sit in his car and try to upload his work. And that's just, we cannot, we cannot do that in the 21st century. Um, 
And then finally, you know, I would just say again, call your senator and representatives because we need to dispel the notion that rural communities do not want or need uh, rural broadband. So I would say, you know, organize, be loud, be noisy, be a pain because, you know, we, we do listen. In order for rural Minnesota to be resilient, um, we need broadband. Pure and simple. I look at what RS Farm and Fiber is doing down in Sibley and Rendell County. Um, coming together, forming a co-op, trying to figure out how they deploy that in the region. You know, um, schools, when I think about that, we funded some Cisco telepresence in some of the schools where it connects, you know, five different school districts, um, uh, community college, the hospital, and so it can be used not only during the school day to teach French because you know, there aren't enough students in each school, but you bring those schools together and you've got enough capacity, enough students to have a viable class. Um, healthcare services. I mean, how critical is that? The ability to, you know, take x-rays and transfer those, to have the best minds in this nation available by um, having access to broadband and the internet. And precision ag, we all know that's big business. I mean, you know, when I look at agriculture producers today, it's big business. Um, you have to have broadband in order to work and function in the work you do each and every day. So those are just a couple of things that I think about as we talk about broadband.